Good morning, good afternoon, Spartans. I'm not sure when we're releasing this, but it's another Alma Mater Monday. I hope everybody had a great holidays. You were able to unwind, relax, and uh, spend some time socially distanced, of course, from our loved ones. Uh, and I hope that you all had a, a great time out there and you're ready for the go. So we have another Alma Mater Monday contestant. She's on the hot seat. It's Cheryl Doherty. I said that right, didn't I, Cheryl? You did, absolutely. All right. So, Cheryl, are you ready for this? Absolutely. I'm okay. ready. So, first question here. We're going to start up. What year did you graduate from Southeast High School? Okay. So, I am a graduate of 1976. Awesome. So, calculate. Uh, <laughs> that makes me that makes me 62 years old. Man. And, and we'll get into some of this. We'll get into some more of your days in high school here. So I kind of want to first talk about you know, some current things. What did you do? So when you graduated uh, from Southeast High School, what were your next steps? Did you go to college? Did you go to trade school? Did you join the workforce? What were those next steps? So um, to be perfectly honest, I did go, um, I went to Eastern for my freshman year, uh, right out of high school, wasn't really sure what direction I wanted to go. And and that's kind of tough when you don't have, um, you know, a specific goal in mind. And it was, it was honestly a financial hardship for my family. And so I decided to come home and go to Lincoln land. So I uh, did that for a year. I did not complete my associates, but went into the workforce and um, originally started with a job working for a small realtor here in town. Uh, eventually got a job at the state, which at the time was like, oh my gosh, I, got, I'm work I get to work for the state, you know, and you have yeah. all these benefits and days off and all that kind of stuff. Um, did that for a little while and then um, ended up in 1980 moving to Phoenix, Arizona. And um, I actually uh, started dating Carrie, my husband, uh, when we were seniors at Southeast. Okay. So, we hadn't met before that. We had a really large class, so um, of I think 350 plus students in our class, and uh, we met our senior year. Uh, I was outside waiting for tennis practice to start, and he was on the football team waiting for football practice to start, and we started dating in October of our senior year, and we have been married uh, 37 years. So kind so, of high school sweethearts in a way, you know that that's absolutely. Terrible. Nice. Absolutely. Um, so uh, we decided to move to Arizona, uh, like I said, in 1980. Uh, I got a full-time job with a real estate developer, which was um, a really great job and loved it and learned a lot. And my husband uh, was a carpenter by trade. And so he started uh, doing that sort of work and then started working for a floor covering store and learning how to do tile and hardwood installation. So uh, we moved out there. We uh, Got married in 1982. We bought our first house there. Um, we had both of our sons there. And then in 1987, when our youngest son was six months old, we decided to move back home. We decided we wanted to raise our family here in Springfield. So that's what we did. And so now, kind of a precursor, you're talking about the carpenter, the tile, the floor. What do you do now? So what we do now is we own the Arizona Tile Company here in Springfield, and we just celebrated 25 years in business. Awesome. So yeah. I actually, um, we both work in the business full time. I kind of run front of house, so to speak. So I'm in charge of the showroom and the sales staff and all the accounting and the marketing and all the things that go with that. And then Carrie is kind of the behind the scenes guy. He's back of house. So he takes care of the warehouse. He handles all the installation and any issues that we have. Uh, we also make custom trim pieces here, and he runs that part of the business. So we both kind of have, you know, really specific job duties. And, yeah. and honestly, there, there are days we don't actually even see each other because really? we're just, you know, doing our own thing kind of yeah. thing. But, uh, so busy, right? you know, yeah. So some challenges, you know, working together full time um, forever, but we've figured out how to make it work. Now, the name Arizona Tile. Does that have something with the, the name? Did that come from when you guys living in Arizona and moving back, or is that? Like Ab yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely. So uh, when we decided to start a company here, after Carrie had kind of established some business with some other floor covering stores, 
um, a couple of things. It's like, well, let's do Arizona. It's nice there. People have a, you know, a, a good feeling about it. It's warm and sunny and, you know, all that sort of thing. Plus we'll be at the top of the phone book with the A. So, <laughs> so yeah, those, those two factors, yeah, kind of put us where we are. And I, I don't think some of our students today really know what a phone book is. Uh, you know, oh, like, they I, don't. I look they at don't. The stuff that comes in. I was like, man, I remember, you know, when I was a kid, you get the big phone book delivery. It's a big stack. And now it's <laughs> little. Exactly. Uh, but man, that, that is really cool. I, I, we kind of all wish for some Arizona weather right now. It's a little cold. Exactly. Cold, but hey, we'll get there. It, it's, uh, you know, the days are getting longer. That's what I keep saying. The days. That's now, a good thing. We're sunny. So it's sunshine for us. All right. So now the part that we're, we're excited for, we're going to go back, go back in time, the time machine and travel to our high school days. <laughs> so do you remember who your principal was? Uh, Herb Scheffler. Herb Scheffler. Okay. What about your guidance team? Did you guys have the same guidance team that went through with you all four years? Do you remember that? Or your assistant principal? Yeah, I did. And it was Mr. Ray. Oh, um, cool. And he had a daughter the same age as me that went to Springfield High, I believe. Okay. Um, was the gym carpet or hardwood? It was definitely hardwood. Definitely hardwood. All right. Uh, did you have open campus for lunch? Did you guys get to leave campus to go eat? <laughs> well, you are, okay. You are really, really taking me back here. So, um, y yeah. So we used to be able to leave for lunch so and, um, I had a, I had a core group of friends, um, and during my probably junior and senior year, uh, we would literally hop in the car, drive down to Taco Gringo, which at the time was like at 11th and Ash. Okay. And for a dollar, you could get a Sancho and a Coke. Oh, my. <laughs> and so Can we bring that back, please? <laughs> please. Exactly. So yeah, so that that was a pretty that was a pretty common lunch uh, lunch time for all of us. Uh, the courtyard was open and, you know, I, I hate to say it back in the day and I wasn't a smoker, but you could actually smoke. We had students that smoked in the courtyard during the day at Southeast. Man, now, is that is, the weirdest thing ever? Yeah, especially to, like, because that's something that, you know, we, wow, that's crazy. That is crazy. to think. Yeah. <laughs> I would say that then your favorite lunch spot then would be Taco Gringo, right? That's where you guys. Like I it. think it kind of was. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> so what uh, extracurricular activities did you participate in? I know you said uh, tennis, but was there any other sports or clubs or just, you know, thinking back that you, that you enjoyed that you were part of? Yeah. I also um, was a member of the volleyball team all four years. And uh, so th that was pretty much my sports related activity. Um, I was always involved um, with, you know, like the homecoming dance decorations and all those things because at the time, and I don't know if there's, I don't think it's still like this, but like homecoming and prom were always actually at school on right. campus. Like homecoming, homecoming was in the cafeteria, yeah. right. And prom was in the gym. And um, so I was always involved in that. I was also uh, really involved in choir. I did choir all four years and started playing the piano when I was seven years old. So by the time I got to a uh, junior high and high school, I was actually playing uh, piano sometimes for choir, for the chorus. Wow. So then I was involved in um, the musicals that we, you know, that we put on in the auditorium and uh, always involved in that music part of it. So you were pretty busy then, huh? I was really busy, really, really busy and um, probably kept me out of trouble. You know, when you look back and think about it, the more activities you have, the less time you have to get in trouble. And, you know, I have I have a great family. Um, we lived in Lake Town. My mom and dad, um, you know, were the foundation of our of our awesome family. I have a sister a year younger that graduated in 77. And then I have a brother that's five years younger than me. So he would have graduated in 1981. And so we're all Southeast grads and and totally proud of it and love it. And, and so glad to see you promoting, um, you know, past students and, and alumni with all the positive things that are going on. Yeah, it's, it, it is, it's truly a great school. I mean, I've, I've been here, uh, this is year seven for me and it's, uh, it, it's awesome. Uh, 
I've been, you know, people have welcomed me from not being from around here with open arms. And I, I truly enjoy uh, Southeast and it's one of a kind. If you, if you've never been inside of it, if you've never worked part of it or went to school, you just don't understand that East side pride. And it's a, it's a, it's a true thing. And it's freaking Southeast is awesome. Um, so is there any extracurricular activities or clubs? I mean, I know you're busy that you kind of looking back now that you wish you would have joined that maybe you didn't. Um, you know, I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I don't have any regrets about my high school experience. Um, it, it was at the time. Well, and to take you back to, we didn't have windows when I went there. Okay. That was there that's no the exterior. Had. There's that there was there windows and there's not. Huh? Right. And so it ended up, you know, being a moisture mold problem, you know, down yeah. the road. But when we went to school there, the only windows we had were the, the transom windows above the doors that walked into the classroom. And so, you know, that was kind of an adjustment after going to, you know, grade school and, and middle school here with with windows everywhere and then yeah. walking into this new building to do that. Um, but but as far as things I wish I would have done, I don't think so. I mean, like I said, I had a I had a great high school experience, um, have very fond memories of certain teachers and um, and, and just love the whole thing. So kind of, can you tell us who was one of your favorite teachers or maybe a teacher that you remember the most uh, in, in the impact um, of as a young student? Yeah. So my favorite two teachers were uh, Miss Wilson, who taught French. Um, I, and, I, and I loved her class and I loved the way that she teached and she was so intriguing and um, loved that class totally. And then, of course, as I'm sure a lot of alumni will say, um, the recently passed away, Mr. Kais. Um, we just lost him uh, within the last couple of weeks and, yeah. and he was an icon and um, uh, just such an innovative teacher ahead of his time um, and made learning super fun. So why, and, and, I, and I've just gone through and done some, you know, looking back and, and reading about Mr. Kais, what, he, the nickname King Kais, did you guys call him that too? I, I've seen people tweet about it, talk about it. Is that, is that a, <laughs> what, what, can you give us a little background Not, you know about that or? Well, no, I, I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody actually called him that to his face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But um, so, so it was interesting. His daughter, Peggy, um, was a year younger than, than me. And I remember being in history class and on a Monday morning, um, he would want to know what everybody had done over the weekend, what they were doing, because his daughter was dating someone in my class. And so <laughs> He was always like trying to to uh, pull information from all of us so he could really find out what was going on with his daughter and uh, the guy that she was dating at the time. So um, hey, that's a good, it was, it was just always entertaining and memorable and, um, you know, one of the classes I really looked forward to. So with that, then we're kind of going to spin to this. What where did you guys hang out in high school when you were at Southeast? Where was the hangout? I, you know, I always talk about, and I've had a couple discussions before that we hung out at like at a parking lot of an auto zone. It was like kind of in the downtown of our, of a, the city that I know <laughs> of. And it was like, I don't know why, but you just met there and hung out there until you went somewhere. But so was there a place right. that you guys hung out or anything? Or? Um, yeah, a, cu a couple of things to talk about. And I don't know if you've heard this before, but, and I try to remember exactly what they called it. So there was like, if you drove down, South Grand West, starting at Second Street, there was a there was a fast food place on the corner. So that would be like the starting point, and then you would drive west to MacArthur and hang a left and go down to where the McDonald's was. Okay. And so then you would circle through the McDonald's and then go back around, and you would just kind of do that all night, and you would see you know other people and your friends, and like you said, stop in the parking lot and talk and do all that kind of stuff. So that was kind of a, a deal. Um, and, and I have to say, when I was in school, I felt like everyone went to all the football games and all the basketball games. Yeah. I mean, on a Friday night, that's, you know, that's what everybody did. The stands were packed. And then afterwards, uh, Angela's Pizza was a huge place to go, either the one on MacArthur or the one on Stevenson Drive. Um, Shakey's Pizza which oh. was at 6th and Stanford used to be a big after game hangout kind of place. And well, so, so I, those, I, those are the things. 
I used to, my dad would take me up to Springfield to go to Shakey's Pizza. When I was a kid, he loved Shakey's Pizza. And so we would drive up here probably, you know, once or twice, you know, once or every year or every other year to go to Shakey's Pizza. Wow. So you know exactly where I'm talking about. So, you know, those are, those are the things that I remember doing and the places I remember hanging out, um, had a great group of friends and, and really close friends and, and many of them that I stay in touch with on a pretty regular basis. So like I said, a great experience and, and made lifelong friends. Did you have a job in high school? <laughs> I did. Um, trying to think of my first job. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, Golden Bear Pancake House, which was at the corner of 6th and Ash. Uh, it was probably a steak and shake after that. And then it was eventually torn down. But um, I think I started working there in my junior year, and I had four really good friends, and the four of us, there are five of us, worked Saturdays and Sundays from seven to three. So it's kind of and, like a party uh, and, with your friends having fun. It, yeah, it, you know, it kind of was, and we, we, you know, we worked our butts off. It was hard work, and you know, we were all working for tips. And then, if I remember correctly, I think all of our bus boys on those shifts were guys that we knew that went to high school with us. And so it was really, yeah, it was kind of like the Southeast team. <laughs> and so I made a lot of money there, and uh, you know, started saving for college, and then ended up working downtown in Bresmers, which was a department store okay. on uh, Adams between six and seven. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, you know, because obviously our kids, it, it, that's a big thing. Like a lot of in, with, with my uh, speak to my football kids, a lot of them, they got like, they'll get jobs together. Like Freddy's was, is a big place for us. They're working at, at Walmart or Hy-Vee and things. And so it's always yeah. fun when we get to go out and I, you know, go out in the community and see our kids working and doing things. And so I, you know, I try and frequent those places just especially now, right? Like we haven't, you know, luckily, I, you know, we're, we're getting to come back with some of the, the hybrid students in person. So I haven't seen a lot of our kids. So any chance to get out to right. see working, it's awesome. And you get to catch up. Yeah. What they're doing socially distance, of course, guys. Um, but you know, exactly so kind of some memories here. What um what do you what's one thing that you hope has not changed at Southeast High School? Um, I hope the the like the feeling of it being its own community hasn't changed. Um my first two years at Southeast were actually um a split shift schedule, and I don't know if you've heard of that, yeah. but yeah. Um, there were so many kids in my age group going to school that they literally ran out of classroom space. And Southeast was a you know fairly new building at the time when I went there. I think it was only four or five years old when I went there. So that you know they had built it, and it, we still didn't have room. So what happened was uh, juniors and seniors went in the morning from seven until noon, and then the freshmen and sophomore came in and went from noon until five. So you know, that first, that first two years, we were kind of all never there at the same time. And it, you know, it was hard, I think, to have that sort of feeling. So then our junior and senior year, when it was full building all four classes again, um, I just felt like it was so much more of a community. We weren't yeah. divided like we were before that. And so, so that was really important to me. And so I'm hoping that there's still that community feeling yeah definitely definitely and that's something uh that uh, you know our, our new principal mr trig would be in a new t year two uh he's really big on that community spirit building you know that that our spartan culture as we kind of talk about so that's that's uh right you know, it's, it's a great thing it, like i said before the the spartan pride is something that you don't understand until you're in the building um what right. would you say you, what was something that you maybe you think that you would hoped would change uh, and I know it's been a little bit of, you know, times that you've been out of high school, but what's something that you hope um, maybe changed within the halls of Southeast High School or anything with that? Hmm, that's a tough question. Um, you know, with the diversity at Southeast, um, a lot of high school students my age were not necessarily exposed to having all different kinds of people around them, um, yeah. socioeconomic differences and ethnic differences and religious differences. Um, and there, I would hope that there's more tolerance yeah. and more acceptance of all kinds of people. Um, you know, I'd be lying if I, you know, if I said there, there wasn't um, or there weren't some hard feelings or some uncomfortable situations uh, when I was growing up and going to Southeast. And I hope that um, those have been mended and, and 
people care more about each other as just human beings um, and not putting people in categories. I think that's like super, super important. And, you know, here at Arizona Tile, we try to, you know, that's kind of our mantra too. We just, you know, everybody, I don't care if you come in and you've got, um, you know, a $500 job or a $5,000 job. I want all of my customers and members of my community to feel like what they're doing is important and it's important to me. Yeah. Treat everybody the same. Right. And it doesn't matter if you're exactly, the, you know, the, the senior class president, or if you're the, the freshman who's, who's brand new to the area, to the district or anything, you, you, we, we treat them all the same. And I think I agree, you know, that's, you know, to me, that's one of the great things about Southeast is that we are so diverse. We have such a diverse student population uh, that it, it, it's literally like you walk in, it's the real world, right? It's, it's just a diverse yep. great place for everybody to go. And it helps us, helps everybody grow as, as people uh, and as, and as leaders and, and developing our students for when they come in as freshmen to when they walk out the door as seniors, that that's our ultimate goal. Um, all right. So yep. the, the next, this next one, okay. I, I need you to think back a little bit. Okay. And, and <laughs> this is something, what, piece of advice and even this could be something that you you've you said you had students that you know that are that have gone through what would be a piece of advice that you would give to freshmen to a freshman walking into southeast walking into southeast what's a piece of advice that you would give to them i would say um get involved you know get involved uh in a student organization or a sporting activity or choir or band, um, whatever piques your interest. I think that those sorts of activities are great stepping stones to the real world. Um, you know, I think developing interpersonal skills with um, not only other students and friends, but with staff and administration. Um, I remember telling my kids when they were in high school, you know, you may not like this particular teacher, you know, if they would be complaining about one and I'd say, Hey, you know what, here's the deal. You got to do the best you can in every single class that you go to. And this is just preparing you for real life. Cause I promise you at some point in your life, you will have a job where you have to work with someone that you don't necessarily like. And so this use this as a learning experience on how to move through those difficult situations, because this is just the beginning. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I think that that's super important that, um, that you get involved in things and, and learn social skills um, because there's so many opportunities to do that in high school. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm a big believer in get it get involved. I and that's what I always tell the freshmen every day, the first day they walk in when we have freshman forward, get involved. I don't care what it obviously as I always tell them obviously I want you guys to play football, uh, but I right. want everybody in this building to to get involved because the more you're involved, the more you buy into that school community, that school culture. Uh, and, and in all honesty, the, the the more you're gonna stay out of trouble too. Like you're gonna be involved. You're not gonna right. have the time to do things, and we're gonna be able to you know keep track of what's going on, help you academics, and we. You build those relationships. We always want our kids when they come in um, through the, the being involved with things to find a teacher and adult that they can go talk to. So, and we know that, you know, you can see when kids are struggling that way, we can work with them and that's all part of getting right. involved. So that way they meet, they meet, they meet people, right? Um, Absolutely. What, what piece of advice would you give a graduating senior? Uh, you know, our seniors only got five months here in the halls of Southeast high school, whether it be in person or virtually, what, what advice would you give them? Um, boy, that's a tough one. Um, cause I kind of struggled coming out of high school, trying to figure out, you know, where I fit in and, and what I wanted to do. And I guess one thing I want to say is that, um, college isn't the end all be all for everyone. Um, and, and even in our business in floor covering, what we're seeing is a lot of people, uh, retiring from the trades you know, plumbers and electricians and drywallers and carpenters, um, you know, there's not a lot of, a lot of people up and coming in those trades and, and it's going to affect all of us. Yeah. Um, we, we need, the, you know, we need those people, we need those skills. And so um, I would first say that uh, college isn't for everyone and that it's totally, totally possible to be super successful, not going to college. I think I'm probably a prime example, <laughs> you know, uh, right. Ending up in a really good place with my own business and, you know, kind of learned from the school of hard knocks and, and figured it out along the way. 
Um, you know, there's times when I wish I had a college degree, but when I look back and I think, you know, would it really change where I am today? I don't know. I don't know. You know, if you're not sure what you want to do in, in school, um, I would recommend everyone or anyone who's in that position to, to go with a business degree, you know, a, a yeah. business management degree, just because there's so many directions that you go, that you can go uh, forward from with that sort of degree it, in school. Kind of cool. And it so kind of cool from all the business angles, right? You take some marketing, some, you know, you take management, you do all those kind of within that degree, uh, but you really focus on the management, but you can go a lot of places with it do a lot of right exactly and I yeah and I kind of wish that's what I would have done and stayed in school and done that um and and then you know figured it out from there so I guess those those would be my two big pieces of advice I agree 100% with you on the the trades that you know there there's a thing out there whether it be you want to you want to go to college that's great you have your plan if you want to uh join the military that that's awesome as well and then the trades those right there's there's the need for all three of those uh and, and you know my roommate in college was an example he uh he, his family owns a plumbing business. He went to, to college. He did the business management piece. He kind of runs the office and his two, his older brother and younger brother, uh, they just, they went into the trade of, of actually being plumbers. And so it, it was kind of neat to see how that, how that whole thing interworked and, and how that was. So, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm right. a product of, I have, my mom went to college and my dad didn't. Uh, and so, you know, they, we, they both did their thing and were able to provide for me. And it, you know, it was, it was awesome. So kind of the same boat, just whatever yep. it is you want to do, just get out there in the workforce and attack it. Um, so we're exactly. going to kind of end here with what was your favorite memory of Southeast high school or at Southeast high school of it? What, what was that favorite memory? That one thing that you think back on as your high school time was like, that was awesome. Um, I, I, and this sounds really, really corny, but I think it was my senior prom. You know, um, I was with a guy that I had been dating for a while. We both went to school there. Um, I, I, I mean, I'll never forget that night, you know, with all of our friends and, and our after prom was at a bowling alley, you know, I mean, it was, you know, we weren't out doing things we shouldn't have been doing. We were, you know, pretty wholesome, good kids, just, you know, enjoying that total experience. And like I said, um, had had several super close friends um, that we all hung out together all the time. And, and I remember, I'll remember that night forever. I'll remember. All right. So we had some technical difficulties there. Uh, Thank you, Cheryl, for uh, giving us your, your input on your high school days. And we really appreciate it. Thank you so much.